to remind you about what we're executing on as far as the product vision. So we have a number of very distinct messages that we're uh, we're trying to make sure are embodied within uh, the work that we're doing within the development team. Um, I've just put this into context. I've just spent Monday and Tuesday in Dublin, two days uh, with the development team and with uh, the QA team and, and, uh, and support. So everyone was in the same room, uh, including uh, on the commercial side as well. So we were looking at our roadmap for uh, how we delivered our roadmap for 2024 and what our next two years roadmap was going to be as well. The our priorities in terms of the, the vision of what we're delivering is to make sure that uh, the capability for integration with the Sage accounting products should be there. So that's hugging closely in North America, the 300 and 100 teams and, and 300 because it's a global product and the 200 team, especially inside the UK. We're looking at making sure that what we have within the product is usable. So you see when we implemented in 23, uh, I can't remember if it was 20, uh, we had two releases actually in 20, 23R1 and 23 R2, the idea of the company narrative, and we have been looking at importing, uh, in, including and, in, uh, and improving uh, reports and things like that, and, and, and general usability. We're wanting to empower our customers with the ability to deliver on the insights that they're getting from their system. So partly through the deterministic AI and then looking through about how we're including other aspects of AI within the system as well and improving the, 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 the uh, notification type features uh, within this. Then we're looking at making sure that our API is uh, all good. And uh, so making sure all our APIs are very powerful and do what they need them to do. So people, you'll be very pleased, I think, about what we're going to be saying when I talk about 2025 onwards. We'll, we have been from 2022 engaged in a modernization of all of our interfaces, and that's still a priority where we're still looking at and rationalizing things within the screens, either affecting the user experience or the administrative user experience. And we're working again uh, with the team in uh, the UK, especially to be able to get us properly within the context of the uh, multi-tenanted Sage Partner Cloud, the aspects of the database there. And um, we've got a number of sticking points which are not held up within our own product, but rather than within the uh, within inside the environment of the Sage Partner Cloud. I'll come back to that as we're talking through our 2025 roadmap onwards. So there's there's progress, not as fast as we want, and I'll, I'll be explaining more about that. We're also looking at the whole idea of modernization. We have been modernizing. Of course, 2024, we saw the, the revolution of making sure that we were delivering a fully 64-bit experience within the context of the Java side. And that is part of the modernization strategy that we've got. And then lastly, we want to get the com commerce right so we don't have a complicated uh, licensing arrangement. We want it really simple. Um, you get um, the full fire hose for every license that you have with inside uh, Sage CRM. So your server should have all of the uh, all of the capabilities, whether it is mobile, whether it is self-service, whether it is the APIs, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the simple buy it. And it's obvious what you've got uh, like type license. And that is more applicable really for the markets like South Africa and elsewhere within the world but we are in that modernization and simplification process, in implementing really the, the Sage values there. So one of the things you will notice is that in uh, 2024 R2, if you had kept a version of this slide, is that there are some things that have slipped. So the exchange integration modernization has now slipped into 2025 
R1. And this is because it is taking quite a lot of F and I'll be explain um, about this, but this is not just a question of simply finding an alternative view, alternative uh, element, um, alternative row. Um, I'll say that again. It's not just about uh, finding an alternative um, role uh, as of to replace the application impersonation for exchange integration, but we want to start the process of relooking at everything that we're doing within the use of MS Graph as well. So it's a big change that is coming for the use of exchange integration online the online experience. It's not affecting the on-premise integration. We uh, Other things that uh, have happened uh, and you'll have noticed is that uh, we had previously uh, hoped to be able to get in uh, the, the uh, idea of um, SSO, uh, so single sign-on and MFA, um, but we're going to be looking that in the course of the 2025 work because we will have made significant efforts within the context of 2025 around the use of um, of not just graph but also other apis we have an internal experiment that will be run uh, across 2025, looking at the SAGE network and looking at what modules that we can use to be able to speed up some of our development work. And in fact, we have got really quite an ambitious 2025, 2026 going in. Uh, we were looking at the way in which uh, the whole of the team uh, is structured and works. So we'll be looking at uh, actually freeing up as much development time as possible uh, to be able to put in as many new features and updates to existing features as possible. Now you'll notice across the 2025 build, uh, you'll see that we're looking at 64-bit core updates as well as third party component and library modernization. So one of the things that I had promised uh, within 2024 R2, which we didn't deliver, uh, was actually the finalization of the move to 64-bit. We had started that discussion for six, uh, or started that move in 2024 R1 when we moved all of the Oracle uh, to a, um, uh, so, sorry, not Oracle, the Java runtime environment to 64-bit, and we're now um, moving through. Now, the reason is, is that it's, uh, we are uh, reliant on when additional resources within Sage become available. So, actually, we're going, this is the year, 2025, is the year in which we're going to get something of a burst of uh, investment into the product to allow us to pay off and remove the technical debt that we've got. Um, again, I'll sp say a little bit about that in a moment. But what you'll see in here is that 2025 R1 is going to be focused on getting exchange integration right. We're going to be looking at the idea of ensuring that uh, that we are simplifying the interface where we can, looking at the improving the administration experience, removing redundant fields, changing the orientation so there's a more obvious move through uh, the fields. We're going to be refactoring and changing demo data and metadata to uh, improve the experience for the demo, but also to remove redundancies and conflicts within the metadata. We're going to make sure that we round out reporting because there's lots of report types that we don't we don't actually use. So we're going to be expanding our dashboards to be able to include um, new fusion chart types, and we'll be uh, including <coughs> two very useful features for system administrators. The first is being able to zip up and send out the logs to the support team to speed up the and improve the support experience. And lastly, the silent extort. But what we're aiming for is that people can literally 
just through a command line install Sage CRM. So this is very much a trick for uh, rapid deployment of systems if for for partners. Um, and, and, uh, and, and, yeah, so you can do a silent install. You can rapidly automate that. That's partly because what we want to do is to allow people who are hosting partners to be able to do this. But also, um, I want to have this um, uh, in, in a way that we're able to deliver this for our uh, Sage partner, uh, Sage uh, partner cloud experience as well. Mm. So that's moving in the direction where we're going to be uh, making sure that that's automated as much as possible as well. As I said, we, we've got a mix of um, of things that we have to do because we're renewing the uh, exchange online experience, um, as well as some exciting changes to improve uh, the uh, experience of of the administrators and users. 2025R2 is when we get a little bit sexy on the work that we've done, because we're going to have uh, new avatars with inside the interface, so you can see your team members' photographs inside, or users will have, instead of calendar, their names, you'll see their faces within the calendars, you'll see if you want them, and you'll be able to uh, see uh, color-coded to which team uh, those people belong to as well. We are going to have improvements in reporting around reports and you'll be able to have generated reports that are automatically sent out as well. So they're all good things, even the idea of WhatsApp integration. And the, and, and this is really uh, explaining the kicker of where we are within this priority for 2025 R1, which is all about exchange. So read this ex read this advisory because this is reshaping everything that we're doing. We're focused on uh, making sure as uh, one, Microsoft ha is ending, is bleeding out this idea of uh, application impersonation uh, as a role, but also is indicated that Exchange Web Services is coming to an end as well for um, Exchange Online. We're going to be in a position that we'll be working with both the EWS experience for our on-premise customers as well as, and, and privately hosted uh, customers. And then we're going for Exchange Online uh, to be able to work with uh, the uh, to, to work with uh, the MS Graph to be able to 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 do that. So there's we. And that is going to teach us a lot about what we want to do uh, with the product into the future. And that indicates some of the 2026 stuff that we're going to do as well. Now, I talked about this modernization. This is a big overarching bit of work for uh, 2025. Uh, Sage is giving us more resources absolutely more resources as well as internally we're going to be squeezing out as much development time in the way in which we allocate our teams uh, to be able to do uh, uh, tasks very much adopting the the sage philosophy that everyone is a developer so we're going to be uh, looking at all of the tasks necessary for us to complete during 2025 the 64-bit architecture transition and that means not just changing the eware dll and the underlying uh, development tool so from the from an old version of delphi through to the latest ver latest supported version of that but also looking at making sure that we have uh, the latest version or a or a, a very supported version of java moving through to replace where necessary the different java runtimes looking at replacing deprecated components uh, looking at all of the performance elements that we can in terms of some of the refactoring of code where appropriate that will be part of the shakeup really of some of the changes to to the underlying code of the eware dll and then looking at security benefits as well performance optimization as at the same time ensuring that all of our ASP pages and .NET uh, components continue to work. So there should never be any disruption to customers as they upgrade from 2024 R2 into 2025 R1 or R2.